Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. About a year ago, I did a blog post called How to Insert a Blank Row at Each Change in a Column in Excel. And it worked fine, but I recently received a comment indicating that if one situation exists, there is a problem with the process that I indicated. So I'm going to use this tutorial to talk about an alternative to solve that problem. So let's see how to do that in Excel. So here's our scenario. I have this data set here and I want to insert a blank row at every point that the salesperson changes. Now the process I had come up with was to insert a formula starting in row 3 in a column I or a helper column and I'm just going to say equals this cell equals the cell above and I'm going to go ahead and copy that down and then I'm going to convert those formulas to their values. I use control C and menu V to do that and now it just has trues and falses there. Then when I select those I can do a control F and what do I want to find? I want to find the word false and do find all and Excel will provide me with a list of all the places that false exists. I'm going to hold down my shift key, select the bottom one, and now notice it's highlighted every cell where false is in column I. I'm going to close this. Now I can use the keyboard shortcut control plus, say insert an entire row, say OK, and now I have an entire row inserted at every one of those locations. Works out great except in one scenario and I'm going to go ahead and do control Z control Z to get back to where I have my formula still in column I and I'm going to go ahead and change Jack here to Tony so I have a scenario where I have four names in four separate cells now I'm going to do the same process here I'm going to select all those do a control C menu V and then I'm going to do a control F, find what, find all my falses here, expand this down, hold down my shift key to select all of them. I can now close this, hit control plus, insert an entire row, say OK. And what happens is I get three blank lines in a row and I didn't get one below Jack, below Tony. So that's a problem with this process. It doesn't work when you have several individual uh, choices in a row. So the alternative to this is using VBA code in order to do that. Now, I'm not an expert in VBA code, so I had to do some searching, and I found some code that solves this problem. So we're going to go to the second tab here. And where I found it was on a link at Mr. Excel, and here I've included that link so if I select this we can go to Mr. Excel here and down in, the, in this there is an entry by Rick Rothstein which provides this code that we're going to use and I also am providing the link to Rick's own web page which is called excelfox.com and you can certainly go to there and I'm sure you can find a wealth of information at his website. But here's the process that we're going to use to insert the code and run the VBA code in Excel to insert blank rows at each change. Notice again I have Jack, Tony, Jane, Ed uh, all in a row here. So a bunch of several ones that in our previous scenario did not work properly. So to insert a VBA code here I need to have a developer tab I select that I go to Visual Basic and what you would normally see I'm gonna minimize that you probably won't see this first item in yours or this last you probably will just see the name of the file that you have open which is insert blank rows after change VBA and I'm going to insert a module and notice now this module appears there I'm going to take the code that I provided below and I'm just going to paste that code right in here and notice it's called insert rows at value change column. Now there's two points that you have to be aware of. First of all, 
notice it has a B here. That is indicating a column. So if you want to use column B where your changes will occur, that's fine. If it's a different column, you would need to change that. So for example, if I wanted to use column C, I would just go in and change that B to a C. I'm going to leave it at B because that's the column I want to change. Also, notice it starts in row 2. So again, if your data starts in a different row, you might want to change that. So now that we've copied that code into that module, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. I can go into my Developer tab into Macros, and notice now I have a macro called Insert Row Value Change Column. I click on Run, and it automatically inserted that code in each spot where the name changed in Column B, even where I just had an individual item in that column and not multiples there. So, a couple things else you need to know about this if you're not familiar with VBA code. First of all, you cannot undo a macro or VBA code. If I hit Control Z, nothing will happen there. So, that's one thing you need to keep in mind. Also, when you go to save your file, if you've never used macros or VBA code, when you go to save your file, I'm going to do a file, I'm going to do a save as, <clears throat> I'm going to put it on my desktop. When I go to save it, I cannot save it as an Excel workbook. I have to save it as a macro-enabled workbook, or else the code will not run. I'll hit save now, and I already have that exist. I'm going to say, yes, I want to replace that. And now I have a file that includes my macro, and it will run whenever I want to run that macro. So that's how this process works. I hope it's useful to you. Thanks a lot for coming by and have a great day. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day, and happy excelling.